So here's the story before I bring them up. When I was a little girl a couple of days ago, my mom went, she used to go to a hair salon. Remember when ladies used to actually go to the hair salon? And that was the girl time. So my mom used to bring me and and whatever else. So the hair salon that my mother used to go to was owned by Cicely Tyson's family member. I want to say it was Cicely Tyson's cousin owned the salon, it, it, husband and wife, and Cicely, Tyson, Cicely Tyson's cousin was the husband, and the wife was the one, you know, she was the mama of the salon, if you know what I'm saying. And so one particular evening, this is when Brownstone was like new, new, new on the scene. And the ladies came to the salon and they had, you know, they did a performance and they were giving out signed copies of, you know, the 8 by 11 autograph with the photo of them and they gave their tape out. And so I literally grew up on Brownstone because it was a cool moment for me. I felt like such a big girl sitting there with all the ladies singing, if you love me, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. And I would, I went to school and I was like, I know these girls. And people were like, who? Because they were so new on the scene. I was like, I met them. I know them. And my mom, because my mother is from Guyana, she became, um, she, she had a good rapport with, um, with Maxie. May she rest in peace. So anyway, without further ado, here are the ladies um, of Brownstone. And you all know they've been on a hiatus for 25 years and now they're back. Oh my God, I can't wait. Hold on, everybody. The Natasha Simona Sequence, Evening Edition. And after 25-year hiatus, they are back. The legendary, Grammy-nominated, Brownstone. Here we go. Okay. Boom. And... Boom. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh my god. Okay, wait. Are we waiting for Alexis, right? Or, yes. or yes. She's coming. I sent her the thing. Um, Rick says he keeps putting it in the chat, but I keep I don't see it in the chat. Oh Hi. Hi. there she is. There she is, the Barbie. Okay. okay. First of all, welcome to the Natasha Simona sequence. This Thanks. is like let me fan out real quick. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look at all of you. You all are so gorgeous and just delicious. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you too. You too. <laughs> just FYI, I have it going live on Brownstone Official. So the people who are on our website, but I have you pinned so they know to come to your page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. I, I wish we can do like another one so that I wish but we your could people. Do five, right. I know. Right. Your people know to come in here. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Listen, it's all good. Well, nice to meet you, ladies. Yes. So Thanks. we have, okay, we have Nikki. Who, well, see, Hi. you know what? Actually, it's so funny because depending on, on how people are looking at it, you all are placed differently. So I can't even properly say who's who, but Nikki, say hi. So hi, everybody knows. I'm Nikki. And we, hi. We have Aaron. Hi. And we have Alexis. Yeah. Hi. Right, Alexis. Okay, no, or Alex. Alexis, yeah. Oh, oh Alex Alexis. Alexis. Okay. <laughs> Ladies, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Oh, um, oh, thank you. When we, when, we, when we secured you and locked y'all in, I was hyperventilating. <laughs> like, you have, have no idea. And, I, and Rick was like, are you really a brown star? I was like, honey, if you love me. <laughs> hey, come on. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know y'all get that all the time. So first I want to say congratulations on coming back after 25 years. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you. But now my biggest question is this, you know, Nikki is part of the original brownstone that we that I know I grew the up OGs, on, right? the OGs, right? Nikki, <laughs> Nikki the OG. I don't I don't call people OG over here. We call them vintage. So Nikki is super yeah, okay. vintage. We like, it. We like, <laughs> it. We like, like it. that. <laughs> Nick, no, but Nikki, you are part of the original. So when you now coming from the very beginning, um, for people who don't know the history of Brownstone, Nikki, you come from Motown. Yes. You were, Brownstone was founded, right, by, you, or you were signed, signed, excuse me, under Michael Jackson's yes. label. The King. 
like that can hello like do, do am i the only one do, do, am i the only one that feels like that is like like it's not loud enough it's like really I mean, surreal yeah it's really surreal so how did that even come about like did he just like discover y'all in the back of the ralphs and was like y'all need to you we know. tell a story one day we were walking down the street no um really it was just i always say that it was my very first example of um faith over fear and really just believing because you know of course my mom my family was like girl what are you doing oh you're about to leave school to go pursue a career so long story short um maxie and i someone asked maxie to be in a video we were in the desert we ended up getting stranded i stayed behind with the person he ended up leaving me stranded in the desert and to make up for it he did an introduction to a guy named barry kolsky who's a publisher at a company called emerald forest publishing and Marla McNally and Linda Blum, um, that we owe them so much. We re I remember very specifically, it was a courtesy meeting that Barry gave us because I ended up getting stranded in the desert. So he let us sing a little song. We had, you know, I had auditions for the group. We had been rehearsing these songs. Artist development was a thing, baby. I come from Motown. We was doing the artist development, baby. So ready for the opportunity, we went and we performed for Barry. And Barry was like, hmm, it's nice, but it's not really what we're looking for. So we're on our way out the door. Literally, like, he's like, thanks for coming. It's all good. And these two women were sitting downstairs as we were walking out. And they were like, just like, well, what was that you were singing upstairs? And, you know, me and my Detroit energy, I'm like, oh, that was the song we wrote. Um, it was the such, such, such one here. Here it goes. <laughs> and we sang for them. And they sat there with their mouths open, two incredible uh, women who are uh, largely responsible for us getting a deal. Next thing you know, Marla was like, look, I'm making a few calls. I have a friend who is running a record label right now. I think you guys are exactly what they need and what they're looking for. She set up an audition for Bear Jerry Greenberg, who is our Uncle Jerry to this day. Um, and the rest is history. That's, <laughs> that's something else because I'm, I'm like, what is that like? So now, now, okay. So Nikki, again, going back to you, you are, yes. you are the vintage OG of Brownstone. You are yeah. the the last girl standing. <laughs> what yeah. does well, Maxie's always with us in spirit, but yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. First of all, my mom. Did you hear the story that I, I told? I heard your mother's Guyanese. I have no hey. idea why I think some broke here. So, so, child, listen, that is too much. So when when y'all went and performed that one year, whatever year that was, it was early, like there was still cassette tapes. Y'all was walking around with your eight by 11 photo. You know, <laughs> my mom and Maxie, they, they bonded because it was the Guyanese, you know, yeah. the Guyanese roots and, and they would stay in touch over the years. And as Brownstone really grew, you know, of course the conversations get less and less because y'all are busy, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right. It was, it was always something fun for me to say, like, as a little girl, I literally, I can, I literally can see y'all standing in this freaking beauty salon, That's crazy. singing your hearts That's out. Crazy. And so when, you know, unfortunately, when Maxie passed away, I took that to heart. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I remember what she smelled like, like, come yeah. on now, you know, and then the group, you know, um, Mimi did her thing for, she, she left and came back and you're like, nope, I'm still standing. What was it like for you to have to reformulate a couple of times and now we're here? Now we've got these two amazing sisters, Aaron and, and Alexis. And amazing they are. So what was that, what was that like for you um, having to just kind of pick up and rebrand a little bit, Nikki? You know what? Um, I want to say to my mom, rest in peace, Helen Gilbert. She wasn't the five-fold, but when I tell you resilient, <laughs> matter of fact, I think she's five-three. Uh, resilient fighter, um, my shiro, um, that never giving up spirit comes from her. And I remember, I always tell the story of like, when I was like 14 something, they, they, they did these fake Polaroids in the store. So this place called Wood Drugs on Plymouth. And I went in there and I saw a picture of Michael Jackson in the little, literally had that yellow sweater with the white shirt tucked in with the little brooch. I was like, ah! So I faked an autograph from him at like 14 years old. And I did not know. And I was telling people in the neighborhood, like, yo, this is my cousin. And my cousin got this autograph, whatever. And they're like, you got that up the street. But um, <laughs> long and short, getting a deal with the, there is none greater. I'm sorry. I know we all talk about whether it's Prince Michael or beyond. But at the end of the day, we know, hands down, when we look at the body of work and the catalog and the life of the Michael Jackson, 
it just doesn't get any greater, right? Everything else was inspired and motivated, I think, creatively by that. So to have someone like that put a blessing on you, like being a part of a girl group, it's not easy to just decide to let it go because someone else decides it's time for them to fly and explore, which I don't frown upon. I encourage us to be honest and transparent about what we need to do. So each time that happened, and let me set the record straight right now, I am officially the only member of the group, and Aaron, and Alexis so far, who's never left. <laughs> I've never thought of leaving. It's never been. And everyone else who made that decision did so because Brownstone was a fast-moving train. And at the end of the day, sometimes people decide that they want to operate at their own pace, whether that's for your mental health, for your spiritual health, for your career aspirations. And I don't frown on that. We encourage it. And usually the, the decisions to move on are usually unanimous. So I keep going. And luckily, God has surrounded me with really talented women to help keep the legacy alive, which brings me to these Jones sisters here. <laughs> OK, so these sisters. So as I, you know, as I was doing my research, I'm like, where, like, was there a talent search that I missed? Like, I'm confused. They're both from New Orleans. Is that is that like a like like did Nikki go to New Orleans and have some like games and was like, oh, you and you. So. Alexis Divine and Aaron, intervention number one. Grammy nominated sisters, first of all, to, to oh, to, um, sidebar to everybody who's watching this live. I have turned off the comments because the comments were, um, you know, you all have amazing things to say, but I just want us to focus right now on these ladies and the comments we're covering, um, from what I could see, Alexis, right. With the with the with the with the cross here. Hello. Aaron, that's Aaron. It's yeah, covering Aaron. Yeah. Okay. So the comments were covering Aaron. So what I will do is periodically just turn it on so that because I want people to interact as well. So if you don't mind, and for those of you watching, if you want the comments to just be a little lower and you want to see her whole entire face, just click the comments and it'll it'll lower it. Um, if that's okay. So anyhow, back to the sisters. You both are Grammy nominated sisters. You're. You have uh, a children's album, The Magic Jones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So y'all just been singing your whole life, and you, so, like, first of all, talk to me about this this children out this Grammy nominated children's album. Excuse me. <laughs> this is an amazing ride. Yeah, but you are right, Natasha. We have just been singing our whole life <laughs> from New Orleans. Um, we grew up with you know john batiste pj morton trombone shorty all in it we're all in that same circle of being um artists in the city and doing every single festival possible so it wasn't like you know we got like nikki d didn't hear of us or you know we we were all we were in a musical circle so if you're in our in in our community then you we kind of it's very small considering the world it is still a very small circle on who's singing, who's doing what. So that's kind of how we also um, know each other. But um, yeah, we, had, we, we in 2020, we decided to do a children's project because when I was at home, like so many other people, we saw there weren't any videos of Black people doing nursery rhymes. And it was really disheartening for me and my sister. Um, I'm like, I don't see this. And I know how music shaped my life shaped my sister's life and what what can we do to change it and so we came up with the idea of the magic jones to bring black fairies black mermaids um to just be black women exactly how we are no costumes no nothing exactly you're getting this um how we are in singing nursery rhymes and and it went to top 10 on the itunes charts which had never been done by black congratulations sisters. <laughs> um, right the shape you know we along with one tribe collective and then we got it along on an album with one tribe collective and it was a collective of 26 black family artists that's which beautiful ever and we all got grammy nominated from that album so it's been a wonderful ride and we collaborated also with a wonderful husband and wife milk and sis and to make to make this work so it was really it was really out of the heart of representation not seeing it yeah. knowing that we could do it knowing that we had the tech yeah. to be there, there to to represent and so many moms and kids it's emotional actually after our shows because they come and cry and say i've never seen anybody sing kids songs like that look like me the kids boys well, baby you know but but I, 
I'll be in my room listening to Brownstone, and then I'm gonna play your children's stuff for the kids because my kid, my kids are sick right now. So I'm gonna <laughs> play, I'm gonna play it for them to go to sleep tonight. So let, so so Aaron, you you were part of Brownstone before your sister. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I've been. Yeah. Yeah. So you right. You so you came in in 2019. Correct. Yes. And and then Alexis came in la last year, 2022. Yeah. Am I yeah, correct? Yes. Yes. Very end of last year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you br you are brand new to the team. <laughs> I am brand new. <laughs> so now we have now we have this beautiful collective, and I really I love the fact that Alexis and Aaron are sisters because I feel like there's there's yeah. some there's some kind of like I don't know if it's just me, but there's some kind of loyalty. There's some kind of wholesomeness when it's like. It's it's really like family. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And with Nikki, like I don't I don't want to say she's like the mama of the group, but she's because she's the OG, like she's been like this is it's like her baby. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for her, like ladies, do you are you with me? Like this is yes. like you know, yeah, I wanna I wanna revive my baby. I I have this mission. You know, re rest in peace to Maxi, and you know, kudos and cheers to Mimi and and the other ladies who have moved forward. But this is this is something that that Nikki is like. I'm gonna die doing this. Like I'm brownstone. <laughs> brownstone for life. We like brown doing this, right? Like or brownstone for life. <laughs> right. Well, well, Nikki never died. So, right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> As my grandson says all the time. So. <laughs> So Aaron, Aaron and Alexis, my question to you both, um, what does it feel like to be part of such a legendary group and singing these classics that you, I know y'all was bumping a brownstone back in the day. Sure. I'm going to turn the comments back on because I want, I want people to, it's, to chime in. It's been amazing to be part of, this is Aaron, I don't know if people are listening also, but this is Aaron, this has been amazing to be part of brownstone. Actually, Nikki has we we have another sister Ashley an older sister but we call we've been calling Nikki our fourth sister for years sister. so mm -hmm. it's literally, when you say it's family that's exactly what it is and I think mm -hmm. um with uh, Alexis myself and Nikki we just all have this one goal our love for Michael Jackson and appreciation our appreciation for the brand of Brownstone and what it meant to everybody especially us and yes. anyone that has ever watched it and our mission to bring this brand to 2023 like never before yes. so that's the goal right now and that's why like if you see us like really excited it's because we are we really are excited <laughs> we are excited to to uh, bring the brand in a fun in another direction i think that hasn't been done since mimi maxi and nikki to be honest um i agree yeah. i have to agree so nikki yeah. Nikki, you know I gotta ask you this question. Um, look at my face. So we we really gonna deep dive into this question right oh, now. Oh Jesus! We gonna we, we gonna shift. Let me touch up. Let me touch up my lip. Uh -huh. We gonna we gonna shift a little bit. Let me let me get some coffee for this question here. <laughs> right. Get some water. I just wanna say shout out. Shout out to everybody who's watching us live. We have the amazing, legendary, Grammy-nominated Brownstone. After 25 years, Brownstone is back. They are better than ever, and and I have them live right here at the Natasha Simona sequence. Um, Nikki, <clears throat> yes. So, uh, what's going on with this P Valley situation in the NCAA playing? Oh. Like, what's like, NAACP? Oh, I just want to know. Dad. You know, we just go. We just gonna get right into this. <laughs> so, uh. what, I know, I know that you're limited in certain things that you can say, but from your mouth, like, what's going on with P Valley and them? I. I can't I honestly cannot tell you what is going on with P Valley and them, <laughs> but what I can tell you without a doubt is um, what is going on with me. Yeah, um, I created a project in 2000 and and all of this is you guys. I'm, I'm gonna give you the shorthand version of it, but all of this is available. This is a plug at wirfmedia.com. and the reason I plug it is because that is where you will get the most accurate. If you, that's what you'll get what I filed with the federal courts, right? Um, but the shorthand version of it is that um, in 2004, I wrote a show called Soul Kittens Cabaret. Um, it was the love of my life. Um, it was my first entree into um, theater. I toured with Tyler Perry. Um, I learned so much from touring with Tyler Perry. 
I'll never forget, he had a conversation with me right before a show and it inspired me so much. And I don't even think I've said it enough. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you and I love you for what you've inspired me to do in my life. So wrote a show, um, did my copyright in 2004 with the Writers Guild, baby. Um, created what at the time was the very first non-binary gender fluid um, transgender character that I had seen on television. In 2004, though, you know, words non-binary non and stuff like that just weren't, mm. you know, popular terms. Right. But because I grew up in Detroit and my mom sang in all these little juke joints and these little supper clubs and stuff, I felt really inspired by the people, the characters that I met, the people that I saw. There was a woman who used to do my hair. Um, and I'm not going to keep putting her name out there because I don't want, I don't know if she wants to be associated with something like this, but she was one of my first experiences with an actual transgender woman. And I remember, and by experiences, I mean, just, you know, having her do my hair, hearing her talk to you, how to communicate. And she was one of the girls. And, you know, back in the seventies, it's kind of like, we was kind of like, you know, so it's a fascination. It was, then like, we were okay. Fascinated as <laughs> yeah. kids, right. You know, so, um, and then of course, as my career progressed, a lot of the people who helped us in our career, a lot of the people who help most people in their careers have a love of Fosse and a love of, you know, and they're gay men and they're, you know what I mean? So I started developing these characters, um, and I fell in love with Tata Burlesque as the den mother and I'm super proud of creating that character. Went on to do workshops all over. Fantasia was in it, Faith Evans was in it, a cast of amazing, really talented friends who gave me grace. It was my directorial debut. It was the first thing I had ever directed in my life. Um, but I was geeked up about it. I gave it my best. We <clears throat> did a copyright with the federal copyright office, which is the most important in 2006 and then we did the dvd that came out it aired at bet and i started pitching it to networks i went through out hollywood pitching it i met with my attorney at the time i'll leave his name out of it i'll leave everybody's name out of it because if you want to know who the people are it's some paperwork but went and met with my attorney at the time he said you know something what i explained to him was i want to do a deal like tyler did the people who supported tyler perry and were very instrumental in his early career, were also working with me at the time. And the gentleman said, the most important thing you can do is own your content, own your property, own your things. Mm -hmm. um, we don't hear those conversations. Thank God it was a wealthy African-American man who helped other people that had this conversation with me and educated me and informed me on that, right? right. So as I go in and I pitch to my attorney, he's like, hey, Lionsgate does these kinds of deals because they've got Tyler Perry, they've got, and you know, all of his, most of his content was there at the time. Sure. And again, I apologize for even associating him or bringing him into this conversation, but the truth sometimes requires some ident identity. But um, met with the head of the company, left him my DVD, left him my script. I had written a script for television, a pilot, which they were going to shoot, explain that I wanted to be in partnership for distribution. I had the financing to fund it. That was 2014. Didn't hear anything back from them. Assume that they passed. Like everybody does. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. Right. And it's not like you get a phone call. Right. It... <clears throat> it's, it's, they passed. And then 2020 rolls around. And I'm like, my husband is like, and I've been hearing about the show and I had seen a couple of glimpses here and there of the Uncle Clifford character. And I noticed similarities, but I'm like, I understand in order for us, for this to be a legitimate litigation, you know, it needs to be substantial similarity. Like, you know, you have to really prove it. So my husband's like, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. The opening scene, they took it from, so well, I, they did, that's my husband's opinion. I didn't say that, he did. Um, and I finally broke down and went down and watched it. Mm. And I watched scene after scene after scene, 47 to 50 comparisons to be exact, that are almost spot on identical. Like how many coincidences a, a new girl comes into town carrying a beat, beat up red bench suitcase, auditions for a club on Some of the language and the dialogue was exactly the same. So initially, like in any situation, right? And I hate to monopolize this conversation with this but I, I you know you asked um so and then we can move on um but initially I felt like not doing this 
because I knew what not doing this it. as far as following through with the lawsuit not pursuing it there was a situation with another situation and it was just not the thing we were coming out of COVID I just lost both my parents back to back mm. this was Sorry. not something that was on the table as an option for me who comes out of a pandemic and, and, and uh, takes a billion dollar a couple billion dollar companies to task right but as I watched and I noticed, I waited until the end and I was like, well, hopefully there's going to be a twist somewhere that makes these things so substantially different that it's not worth it. Right. And then people from the show that done, had done the play started calling me and people started congratulating. Hey, girl, I saw it, but I know this was good. How come you didn't tell nobody? We didn't get a check, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, huh? So I decided to pursue. I talked to a few attorneys. Their exact words were they've never seen anything like it. Um, the other part was I talked to some other folks that I was really close to. I talked, I didn't just dive into litigation. We spent a good amount of time doing what we could to avoid that, even with them. I didn't just wake up one day and decide to file a litigation against someone. Right. We tried everything we could to not have two black women doing this. But when you really stop and think about how rampant it is in this industry, how often it happens, how often this happened to me, right. you have to make a decision to stand up for not just yourself, but any other creative who may face this in the future and just stand in your truth and know that your truth will carry you through even the biggest obstacle. You know, this is Nikki and Goliath and thank I'm God for Brownstone, which gives me some refuge and solace from the madness of this P-Valley thing. I'm so sorry. Like, thank you. First of all, thank you for answering and, and clearing that up and, and bringing, you know, that situation here, you know, the understanding of what is happening. Yeah. Um, it's important when you, when you believe and you stand firm in what belongs to you and you see what's going on, can you imagine? It's like, you know, it's like involuntarily sending your child off, you know, like I didn't put my kid up for adoption. I didn't give my kid to nobody. Like I just steal my baby from the hospital like this so i am sorry uh for everything yeah. that you do have going on um and for this too but i'm not you know what though and i understand the sentiment and i accept and receive that because it feels good to know that people are compassionate about what i'm going through but i'm not sorry about it at this point at this point for me it's like i know how god works and how things always work out when you're coming from the right place and you're telling the truth yes and I know that sometimes we are all brought to our knees to make us pay attention to something greater. I'm actually now finding a place in my heart to be happy about this well, here, situation. And I'm happy you're saying that because you, um, on one of your lives that you did, you were talking about the stress that it was causing you in it. I think it was like causing- oh, uh, uh, TMJ, big time. I already had TMJ, but it was off the chain. And the knot isn't so big now. Thanks to my Brownstone sisters and this amazing project for working on you feel so good all of this this feels so organic and so good like i feel like you have your it two is. sisters supporting it you is. and like yeah. they're like like i feel i almost feel like they absorbed whatever you were going through and Baby, what you I are still going through like that it. yeah you know and they're that's it. like we got you that's well thank that's it thankfully now you've got you know all these new projects coming up with brownstone that you're like okay let me let my people take care of this nonsense over here while i focus well, I on this up here. And one thing I do want to clear up, though, that's very important. You said the NAACP, and I know that people are kind of going with that. Um, one thing I'm really big on is making sure that we're taking care of our mental health and wellness, right? And I think, in the, in, and not to turn this into a whole thing, but I think in this industry, we're often kind of shunned. It's shunned upon when you, like, express how you're feeling. The NAACP thing for me was just me being transparent about kind of the punch. It was literally a punch in the gut because I always wanted to win an NAACP Image Award. And to be three years into this and to see that they got six nominations and to know where they got it from in my heart, I know I have to prove that. But to know that, that not just NAACP Image Awards, but a GLAAD Award, like this is the second GLAAD Award for the second show I've been involved in that I haven't received. So when I say that, it's not like, you know, off with their heads. It's more like disappointment that now a, a really prestigious organization that I've loved my whole life is giving an award to someone who I truly believe has taken something from me. 20 years of work. It's coming. It's coming. It is. Your, your award, they, it's being dipped in the finest gold right now. It's being, it's being prayed over it is. from the depths of whomever.
Fever is playing over this award. Yeah. It's coming. It's being crafted <laughs> as we speak. I'm, I'm trying to find answers. something real prophetic after that. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I'm playing a small violin too long. Come on. Okay. Look, look. Th this is the small violin right here. Right? No, you're not. You're not. You, you, your voice deserves to be heard. The story deserves to be put out there. We deserve to know what is happening to you. You are. You're a living legend. You know, and it's not Thank fair you. that you suffer in silence. It's not fair right. that this battle is. First of all, this battle is not yours. It's, it's who? The, it's the Lord. Lord. Okay. Okay. And so, as your fan, and I speak on behalf of everybody that's going to see this as your fans you know i feel like you know we we should know what's going on so we can support you if we need to put if we need to stand outside with some picket signs <laughs> make a petition stuff like Man, that I was so, like, how can i consider image no, i was just playing that's a joke that's a joke no baby I, i'm yeah. on my let me get my yeah. gown together rick let get my gown together we going we going wait a minute <laughs> Um, I do want to send a message to you. Uh, Melba Moore is in the building and no. she wants me. She says, Melba yes, Auntie Melba's here. She said, please let my girls know I am waving to them. We love you. Yes. We love you, Melba Moore. <laughs> That's the thing. It is because of Melba Moore. It is because of Diana Ross. It was because of the Supremes. It is because of Aretha Franklin. It's because of those legends that we exist the way we do in this industry. Our Absolutely. Gifts. Now, this Absolutely. industry is a whole other conversation. But our gifts. Absolutely. Now, what? Tell me. Okay, before I was, I, I want to get into. So we're gonna open a tab over here because I want to know about your foundation from the bottom up. Um. So at, before we get into that, I do want to know what is Brownstone working on right now. Come on, Lex. Talk to the people. That's our little maestro. I said <laughs> Lex and came in here and got us all the way to musically together. She, oh my so God, is please. so is is so Alexis. You're the Barbie, right? Barbie, what's your yeah. name? Yeah. So is she the baby of the group? She is. Because um, you know, yeah. you know, you know, every group has the baby that be acting yeah. up. <laughs> no, no, but not that baby. Listen, he's the, I'm the he baby that's the baby. acting like the mom. The mom, right? No, no, I'm the only one that's acting up. She, she is the baby of the bunch, but she is the little sister who's taking care of so much. Okay. Like, let me say this, and I'm gonna let you talk because I know I've been rambling. Having someone, having two people join this group who not only are extremely beautiful inside and out, talented, we all the same damn height, praise the Lord, <laughs> but their work ethic because of who their parents were and how they raised them to be and how they have just really, when you talk about softening the blow of everything that I'm going through, now mm. I'm getting they have been... What do we need to do? Oh, I know somebody who does that. I'll call them now. What do we need to do? Okay, let's let's do that. And Aaron has been big sister almighty to both of us. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Just, just really. So that is the description I would say. Women who are not afraid to roll up their sleeves and do the work and really commit to what is best for this group fully and feel really gracious and honored to be a part of the group which is so important. I love that. Wow. So I'm sorry, go, go next. She asked you a question <laughs> about the next and I took over. I'm all getting teary. That I don't know what the question was. <laughs> So, so what is, what is Brownstone doing today? Like, what are you all working on? When can we start some new music? Where are we going? Where are you at? Where are we buying these tickets? What are you, what, what are you working on? <laughs> so we are honoring legends. Um, and so we have a live album that we're working on right now. We just put out our first live single, um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, giving all, I mean, all respect to the great. OK, um, and keeping it in a Motown family. So we're working on that album. We have some shows coming up, baby. The Brownstone <laughs> baby. live experience. I'm telling y'all right now, I have worked with a lot of people. But this group, what we are bringing to the industry, to the world this year, get your tickets, baby. When the tickets go up, get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, just a Cyber, I'm going to turn the comments off just for a few minutes, uh, and I'll turn it. You all know I'm going to turn it back on, but I just want to. I just want us all to see the ladies. Okay, there we go. Boom. So go ahead. Give me. Give me the get your tickets again. So I get, just need to see your whole face. Get your tickets, and then we are also working on our tour. So that's what we have that I can say right now. Nikki, you can chime in. I mean, I'm just going to say this, and Aaron and I are both probably going to chime in. Listen, 
the way I have always, I'm from Detroit, so I have always wanted to do a tribute to the Supremes because they are the ultimate girl group, like Dream Girl and Sparkle, which are my favorite movies ever, mm. come from that legend, right? And when I said it to these two, like, yo, we should do, and for them to like really embrace it and love it and be like, are you kidding? We are like girl group fanatics. Yes. Like ha we are a group of girl group fanatics. Mm -hmm. This delivery that Alexis gives, the delivery that each of us give on our songs, on these live records, any of us could be solo at any mm. point. But there's so much passion for unity and sisterhood and harmony and everybody shines here. And when I tell you that this Alexis is sh Ooh. shining, 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 yeah. On this, <laughs> ain't no Mahana. And hey, talk about your little sister. You ain't tell us to be all like that. Here. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Yeah. You're doing a good job. Thank uh, you. <laughs> but Alexis, I mean, she's modest. We, we, and she has to be modest because that's just how, you know, artists are. But, you know, she's been on tour with Tyler Perry, went through the school of Tyler Perry, went through the school of Kanye West in terms of learning um, excellence, what it takes to put on an excellent production, high quality, and not um, not compromising any of your creativity. And I think that's what she really brings to this. And so it's amazing that after all of those wonderful experiences working with both of those people, like directly, she's been able to bring that to brownstone and that's why i think people gravitated toward it immediately it's not like you know you're picking somebody out the like the clouds you know it's literally somebody who's worked equally as hard maybe in a parallel way and now we all get to work together and it's and it's it's just, it's, it's easy work i mean i love girl groups i'm obsessed we we've been in girl <laughs> groups our whole life all of us yeah so we like we could be solo but it's just so much more fun like, it, yeah <laughs> So let me, I just, I want to ask um, Alexis and Aaron, you know, having to, I don't want to say fill the shoes, but you know, you're, you're part of a legendary name, right? Part of a legendary group. Um, we all remember who the original founding brownstone girls were do you do you feel any pressure on being the new brownstone do you know how are the fans receiving you so i'll start since i'm the newest um <laughs> i there there was there was a little pressure coming into it um but nikki kind of told me she was like do you like just be who you are sing how you sing don't try and sound like anybody else and that made it so it took a weight off of my shoulders and it made it so much more easier, not easier because this is all hard work, but it made it <laughs> a, a better transition for me to just, you know what, let me be myself. And by me being myself, there's moments even in Ain't No Mountain High that Nikki's like, girl, your tone is like, reminds me of Mimi or reminds me of Maxi or there's just different moments or different things that I may do that I'm just singing like myself, but it still has a hint of them. So it's not like we're, uh, we're trying to be them or sing like them. We are just being who we are and it makes it a lot easier for us to be in this group. But you know, and the, the fans, listen, the fans had a lot of question marks. Okay? They said, like oh, who? And they don't, and, but, that, but that's the thing, look, we got some super, super fans. Shout out to Tim and Jen who watched yes. this. We got, listen, Brownstone fans do not play. They don't play. They will give us, oh, that's, that's cute. That record's what? cute. That's, that's single, that's all right. And they'll give us, yes, God, honey, whatever, and whatever. And the reviews, I would say 99% of the reviews on this record have been amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing, you know, when I, I'm a, first of all, I'm a radio girl. So a lot of your hits were like, you know, radio top chart, you know what I'm saying? Like all these songs. And so when you think about songs today and, and how we receive music, it's way different. Yeah. Girl groups are, it's different today than it was back in the day you know i'm just gonna leave it there and um you know it's it's a, it's a smaller selection that we have to choose from and so when you take a group like brownstone people are naturally going to want to hear five miles to empty kind of songs you know grapevine all of that so when it comes to writing and and just getting new music out there collectively nikki alexis aaron you know what are those sessions like 
do you and 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 that kind of pressure like what you know do you feel like going back to the 90s and bringing that music back or you know <laughs> well when we are ashley as a part of this live experience album right we are going to re-record our hits our yes. records that people love and speaking the 90s that we got Aaliyah. we're covering i care for you we're covering daydream of our we, like our sh our live show has become so much fun in the creative process Let's make the determination, and we agree a hundred thousand percent with her that we're gonna do if you love me. Because what? everybody else has been doing if you love me. Hello. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so let me ask you this. I know we didn't discuss this, and I know Rick did not like ask you this in the in the chemistry call. But do you? Can you guys give me a little hmm, five miles? Uh -uh. Uh -oh. <laughs> My dog. What's gonna happen when we start singing is my dog is gonna start. There he goes. See, just that little thing that you. It's okay, Kato. Come on, Kato. See, I was gonna, I was gonna call, I was gonna call Fido. See, and you said Kato. See, I was close. Kato. Entire rehearsal. He live. So on, there you go. On brownstone. So if you want to see anything, literally, there's Bro. hours of rehearsal. Where? On on brownstone. On the brownstone. Yeah, on your okay. So we so we all gotta go there because <laughs> we are doing something that is probably not as popular. <gasps> Nikki uh, Love, probably be bad. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if we're doing something that's not as um popular, we are literally showing everybody our rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So our rehearsal all the way through to you'll be able to see us when we start touring. Okay, and you get the hiccups, you get everything. But we we are just being really transparent with this whole process and really inviting everybody in so yeah it'll be i'm excited i love i I'm love back. The, i'm back there you go. I, was like, I was like oh thank you i'm, I'm back, back. <laughs> no i'm definitely going so everybody we got to go to brownstone official we got to watch that together so tonight after the show get your popcorn and let's just like totally i wish you keep on Nikki, you playing hide and go seek or what we are playing hide we are playing hide and go seek with nikki gilbert of brownstone <laughs> well i'm excited <laughs> For you, are you able to say where your first, uh, where the where your first leg of the tour is gonna be, or yeah, actually, I think, yeah, I believe the first stop um, right now is in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly the date, but it, it's it's coming up uh, February or March. But Pensacola is the first. But you, but the way it normally happens with I guess with a bunch of other fans also is that sometimes you may get some we may get a call next week so we may be like hey Natasha actually our you know the tour is there's our, yeah. our, our early okay okay you, I'm back guys I'm sorry it's a, I, 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 you know if we're playing hide and go seek just let we're me know because I, I can hide. hide and go seek I'm trying to pull them. okay there we go thank you all right we're good we're good we're good we're good, we're good. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so okay so you were saying the first stop is in Pensacola but you were saying like sometimes it could change it can, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's very just, you know, okay. okay. So somebody, I, and if we're, we're, we're not booked for that date, it'll start. Right. Um, well, we'll, everything will be updated on the website and we'll just keep a, keep a watch on that. That would be awesome, South. Come, y'all get ready for this tour that we can't really talk about, which is why we kind of moving around <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> Wait, I mean, something big is coming. No, we're, listen, back. I will, hello, you have one of, no, I am the number one brownstone <laughs> yeah. fan in the building. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, Nikki, can you talk to me a little bit more of, of your foundation from the bottom up? Yes. Okay. So from the bottom up is such a passion project for me. Um, you know, when Maxie passed away, um, it was the hardest, darkest moment of my life. It's something that I just really did not think that I would ever really fully recover from because a lot of people don't understand. She wasn't just my group member. She was my sister. She was my best friend in the world. We grew up together. Um, so that was the most tragic loss in the world. And I needed to do something because I noticed that even, um, even when, you know, I came up with the idea for R&B Divas, a big part of it was about healing from the brokenness that a lot of women in the industry suffer and hopefully by us being transparent about what we go through it'll inspire other people to get the help that they need mentally spiritually physically whatever right so i'd always been kind of pushing for that i know that a lot of people didn't see that on rmd divas that's a big part of the reason why i left but um when maxi passed away and i was in the middle of that litigation i knew that there 
for something I needed to do. So I called it From the Bottom Up because that was the title of our album. And the, and the reason we called our album From the Bottom Up is because we understood that if you have a solid foundation and you build something um, that is structurally sound um, and you put quality, you know, materials and ingredients into it, it will last, you know, infinity, right? It will, it will touch people and always be um, a part of, of generations. So From the Bottom Up, became then a series because again it was about women who hit rock bottom after high profile women who hit rock bottom after um falling from grace and had to build themselves back up and then we finally made the decision to make an official 501c3 nonprofit where the focus there was to help women and girls in our community to understand how important mind body and spirit well spiritual wellness is to partner with other organizations that will teach us uh, socioeconomic, or I'm sorry, help us to accomplish better socioeconomic conditions. Uh, we're really hyper-focused now on mental health and wellness. Um, I'm happy to say I can announce it on your show. We partnered with the National Organization for Women now, our Soul Warrior Christian News, who's the president uh, from the bottom up, has partnered with them and BLDPWR, which is an organization that empowers artists to be advocates, you know what I'm saying, in our work. And we're hosting a mental health conversation February 28th in DC. Um, mm -hmm. I'm super excited. Shanti Dobbs from Silence the Shame is uh, going to also be a part of that panel discussion. I'm going to speak from the perspective. We all know when DJ Twitch passed away, it was kind of a shock and a wake-up call for everybody. When we look at what's happening, you know, Jaguar Wright, who's a peer that I was signing MCA records with, and whatever you believe about her, seeing her spiral out of control as a high-profile yeah. person in this industry can be triggering to people in our community because we dictate so much of what, not dictate, we influence so much of what our community does and experiences, right? So we're trying to curate conversations that allow us to just be transparent and human and hope that that will help inspire our community to do it, right? So that's it. And, and not just that, obviously, financial wellness is a big part of mental wellness, Absolutely. right? Uh, poverty and act, not having access to resources and stuff is a big deal. So we feel like it is a bunch of different pieces that we have to put together. We're a small organization. We just kicked off officially in 2018. We do an annual She Speaks Live town hall discussion this year, and I, I feel like I'm rambling, but y'all, this is 25 years of a career that I'm trying to get out. Uh, this year, we're on March 11th for Women's History Month. We are working with, not working with, we are being presented by J.P. Morgan Chase. Yes! yes. Hello! Yes. Um, we are doing <laughs> shout out to my girl, the Master Connector. Um, we're doing J.P. Morgan Morgan Chase Beauty, Brains, and Business Forum at Cass Technical High School. We are honoring Vina Elliott, who I actually went to college with. She is the head of uh, Chase Advancing Black Pathways. We are honoring our international grand basilisk, Rashida Lib Madam Rashida Liberty. Um, it is going to be incredible. We got some incredible hosts that are coming to help us have some real serious dialogue with young women and girls in our community about how they can build their businesses, how they can have home ownership. Because a lot of us in this industry are suffering, not just because of, of mental health things that we're dealing with, but nobody prepared us for the financial part, the financial wellness in this industry. So that's why you see so many people really like realizing they have no ownership, they have no power, they have no equity in the things that they create. That lends itself to a lot of... I'm gonna, you know, it's so funny that you say that. I have a girlfriend. I, I cannot say what group she was from, from back in the day. Um, but I'm gonna talk to you behind the scenes a little bit more because I would love Please. to see the sisterhood and partnership because she pours into me everything that you're pouring into us right now about owning your stuff, learning the yeah. business, knowing she, when I tell you drills this into my skull. So to hear you saying this from someone who came up during an era where it was okay being ignorant and blind and leaving your life in the hands of all these people who, do you know what I'm saying? Robbed everybody blind. So I thank you for doing this and putting this together because, you know, as new artists are coming up and, and, you know, faster than before, you know, faster than before. Faster we than have before. to start educating. People are so caught up in wanting to be famous. And sometimes, I don't always say it warm and fuzzy. Our kids got to know how to handle that. Mm -hmm. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually. 
Well, we it's see them spiraling right here. You know, we have all of these new stars from the YouTube and the TikToks. And, you know, we didn't have any of this before. You know, you had, you had a few doors that you could go into when it came to entertainment. Now, you know, it's, it's, it's like literally endless possibilities and you see them spiraling. So I commend you, you know, on, you, you're like, the, you're almost like the sacrificial lamb of your own company. Like, oh, no, you, I'm not receiving no, no, that. No, no, no you went through that. it. We're not sacrificing no, nothing. You went through lies. it. <laughs> you went, you went, you went through it. You went through it already. And so you sacrificed already. Okay, okay, and now you're okay, like, okay, that's what okay, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know what I, and that's the reason why I say with this P-Valley thing, even with the R&D Divas thing, like, if I had not, if I had not gone through what I went through with R&D Divas, which we're not going to get, obviously, going to get into here, but if I had not right. gone through that, I wouldn't have known the importance of ownership. Right. I would have known that I had, I wouldn't have known I have no power if I don't own anything. Absolutely. So then going into the next situation, pitching ownership to have somebody kind of be like, mm, 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 and what I believe is like, oh, we'll have ownership, but you won't. Right. And seeing it make hundreds of millions of dollars, it's like, no, this is what we finna yeah. do. So I don't think, I think that I've absolutely been brought to my knees over and over again because God knows that I'm a sturdy built person. I, I, you know, I, he, you could have said, you could have said something. there was another word. I, I was gonna say. I was waiting I for. Said, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be nice. I know you tried. I said God in the same sentence. I'm not gonna disrespect the Father, but He know what I wanted to say. Um, so I, I, I don't, I don't shy away from it. It's difficult. It's hard. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. It is the hardest thing I have done. It spent three Christmases explaining to my grandson, you know, why things are a certain way in our household. Right. And why it's so important for me to fight and win yeah. this situation. Right? So it's not easy, but with our foundation, what we're hoping is that these incubators and having lawyers and um, business managers and people who really care about our community come in and volunteer their time to help educate these kids right. before they go and they sign these slave yeah. contracts. Yeah, oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's why we're asking for You know, if people want to do it, let them yeah. do it. But if people are looking for, like we were looking for when we signed our deal, and people said, this is your lawyer, this is your manager, this go who don't do this. With. And if you don't want yeah. it, you don't have to take it. Who's not? Who's going to pass up a deal with Michael Jackson? And again, we want people to know they can pass up that deal because what's for you is for exactly. you. And they don't tell us that. Exactly. And I love the fact, you know, you not only do you have your own, your family, your internal family at home holding you down, but you have these sisters here with you. Yeah, and it feels as I monopolize the conversation you, again. You all, no, listen, you all, you all feel real like you. Everybody watching this, don't they feel good? Like this feels oh, like you all you. are literally <laughs> like it feels like you all are in the same house. Everybody's in their own corner of the house. <laughs> it feels like you all. all we like are. I, like I know we Aaron are. and. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, are you really? I'm on my way. Hold on. <laughs> wait, I mean, I'm not in real life, but I mean. No, like, I know. No, you you really feel you really feel good, and I'm really excited. You know, you all have your own individual lives, which which is which is really important because you all come to the table with your own experiences. You come to the table with love. You come to the table with knowledge, and I feel like you all just kind of said, "Hey, we're doing this." till we're done here on earth yeah. so let's put let's put it all here you br you bring your stuff you you two bring your stuff let's all put it on the table and let's tackle it together and let's let's you know feed the world and so i really every time yeah. i hear each of you speak it's like i can feel the sisterhood through Aww. just yeah Thank you, you. I, i'm like i am excited more more so than ever i really am excited um I know, you know, Nikki, yes, you know, we, we, we definitely, we, listen, people want to hear from you, Nikki, like you have been missing for a long time, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been asking a bunch of sugar honey iced tea for a long time, but yeah, I, I'm excited for people to see. I've never been as happy about performing. I don't ever. Because, and I say that because in the beginning I was young, mm -hmm. I didn't know, I was geeked. It was different. I was happy, but it was different. Like, it wasn't happiness. It was, I'm geeked. I can tell everybody in the hood that I got a tour with Michael Jackson. I got to deal with Michael Jackson. I'm happy for the first time in Brownstone, in music. And there's a lot of bullshit going on in music right now. Um, and, I, and I have to say, and I don't want to offend anybody who's contributed to what this group has been in the past. But what this group is today, 
I know this is God. I know this is everything positive. I know this is their dad. I know this is my dad. I know this is my mama. And more important than anybody in any spirit, I know for sure this is Maxie. And I didn't want to say this to get emotional, but you said Alexis's names a few times before we got live and I recorded one of them. And each time you said it, 111 popped up as a number of people that were watching. Oh, I just got chills. Let's send it to y'all. I just got each chills. Each time you said it, Alexis's name 111 popped up. I'm I'm going to send it to you. I recorded it. So, we know without a doubt that mm. Maxie has given this her blessing. That is the reason who Aaron Paul. This that's the reason why we're so excited. I'm going to take it over. I'm going to let you have your have, have your moments. Sis. But but it it is good because we, when I met Nikki, we it was a time when she had just lost her mom and how did you yeah how did you meet because you because you came before your sister so yeah. how did you meet <laughs> yeah <clears throat> teen um brownstone was celebrating 25th yeah. year oh goodness year. yeah and so um essence, uh, uh, the essence festival called and asked brownstone to perform at that time um nikki was like hey she thought it was a one-off i don't want to take put right. words in your mouth nikki right um, yeah you want you want to okay no go ahead so, please Continue. so she, she um she was like oh this this might be a one-off but as soon as people heard that brownstone was performing again they um toward the date started getting booked and um Mimi at the time was 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 excited about the the, the essence festival but also wanted to go back and doing her own thing so uh, Nikki knew she would need a space somebody who else who else is out there we had a mutual friend he's actually on the live Carlton who um who we knew she was like hey that's your friend we've met through each other I know she sings I've seen her around performing um could you you know tell her give me a call and I reached out to Nikki we had one conversation. I think she was at the hospice with her mama while we was on the while we was on the phone. Oh wow! Like, hey, I might need you to come in. I'm not sure if Mimi wants to continue. If she doesn't want to continue, come see if this is an option for you just just to do background. If you want to help out or you know, like I don't know where you fit in, but just let's just see if you do fit in in any in any capacity. Right. That was the actual honest. She's like, look, I'm being. I'm right now. I'm at a hospice. I really can't discuss everything. Thing right now but this is the most that I can give you so if you if you're interested in the opportunity and I'm like are you mean I've met Nikki before and if you ever met if you ever have a thought of her as in the R&B divas Nikki you just might you just too dated because her energy is like the best <laughs> and so immediately I remember meeting her and just being like oh my god I love her like just oh, girlfriend too, too like, sister. she's this is gonna be my girl I'm gonna make her my <laughs> she has no clue. yeah and a friend capacity, you know, you know, there's a girl that you'd be like, Oh, yeah, I like her. I wouldn't exchange exactly, her, but this one, she's yeah, she's she's one of them. But, um, so she so then I come, I come to rehearsal, she's like, Actually, we, you know, I we we, we gel, we we really we just she can was, she just she's blowing over it. She, I said, Listen, I'm gonna send you these records, right? And, um it's a lot to learn. I don't expect you to have to get all of it like that, but you know, just do your best and let's see where it lands. Child, Erin came in there with lyrics, memorized notes together, <laughs> like the work ethic. Wow. That it is, it is like a carbon copy of how Alexis came into the situation. It was crazy. She came wow. in and, and delivered, which was like, oh, this is, oh, this could be, oh, what? Like, we a thing? <laughs> we, <laughs> <you know> this? <laughs> no, you're not sure why about that. <laughs> this is a lot right here. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. And we got at the same time, uh Marvelous Marvelous Oh yes. And, yes. And it just was um Loretta McIntyre and Marvin McIntyre. Oh, yeah. Represented so many wonderful people. Keith Sweat, yes. new uh, new edition, uh, so many, so many fabulous people. And now they represent us. And they they they, they were just doing what they do and booked like literally were booking so we were already booked before we even had the whole group form talk about opportunity and preparation what? that was it that was it and so it was like okay this works love you like let's let's 
this this that's Marvin Marvin right there said Aaron Jackson official the work ethic is impeccable and he's a hard ass. Okay, he's that, a dog that's, that's your manager. Yes. That's the manager we're talking yes. about right here. Okay, and we cannot go without mentioning our creative director, Mr. Glenn Rock. So our little big brother, Victor, um, incredible, and P Money. We got such a great team. We got an amazing yeah, team you, of people. Every time I say you feel so good, you know, this, this, this trio, like I'm, I'm loving it. You feel good. I saw a couple of people say it feels like home. It really does. This feels so good. I cannot wait to see you ladies on the stage. I can't wait to meet you like in real life. I love Person, it. Yes. But I, I really can't wait to just be in the audience and just watching the magic really pour through, pour through the, the microphones. You, you ladies are amazing. Um, who's the realtor? I see. No, I know somebody's the realtor. You're the realtor. And yes. So listen, you're not going to be doing that for much longer. I'm just saying. <laughs> listen, wait. First of all, I've, I come from a gym. We're not Jamaican. Oh, honey, we don't have 10 jobs. Yeah. What it's going to be is oh, we're going to be flipping I, at a family club where divisions in a I enjoy <laughs> doing what I get to. I mean, it, actually, real estate and entertainment, they kind of intertwine because entertainers are always moving. And most of my clients actually happen to be entertainers. Uh -huh. Don't other people to know what's going on and know that I would take um, care of yeah. them. And I do it while I'm going to do that while I'm in rehearsal. Like, hey, this is the contract. Okay. That, I'm just, I'm just saying you you about to be super busy super booked that part. And even more blessed than yes. you have ever been ever yes. so yes. you know yes. and 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 we got the model we got the model alexis i see i see her she has a whole business listen talk about it but let's talk about it nice guys where y'all so, at it's the same <laughs> like like everything we are jamaican so we're not jamaican <laughs> Um, but in our family, we, we have a lot of hustle in us. So, yes, I do have a clothing line, an accessory line. I make all our jewelry. I'm wearing um, one. And it's right now, guys. He's wearing but... Nikki. Oh, let me see. see. Okay, hold see on. I'm gonna turn... Wait, see? No. Hold on. No, I'm going to turn the comments off really quickly, everybody. And let's see. You know what's funny? 11 is my number. I know it's a lot of people's number, but I started really focusing on numerology uh, the year my grandfather passed away in 2005. I never quite believed. I, I actually am Jamaican. I'm first generation American. So my father, Jamaican, mom, Guyanese. So I grew up just not believing in all of that stuff, the magical stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? And in 2005, um, numerology just started. It came to me. And the number 11 came to me. And of course, it spooked me at first, but now I get it. Do you know what I'm saying? So whenever I see 11 or, you know, all, uh, we're more tapped in now more than ever, which is amazing. But the first thing I saw was your 11. And I was like, 11, 11. Yeah, oh. absolutely. It was a gift from my sister. I love, love that. And so, <laughs> and that's, so that's part of you. So you got a whole line, a whole accessory line, clothing line. So if you ever need a plus size, big hair, big Come mouth girl. I got, you. You know I got you, baby. You are the one. Okay. You know, <laughs> oh, we, well, I, I could fit this body in some things and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but I, I love that you all have your individual lives and then we have the sisterhood here and the sisterhood happens individually and together. And I'm so, so, so grateful that you said yes to come here. I'm, I'm fanning out all over again. So let me turn the comments back on and let everybody else pour into you. Um, let me know your colors. Give me, give me a color, Aaron. Oh, my color, royal Ro blue. Royal blue, Alexis. Let's go, baby. Go. Gold. gold, Nikki. I don't know. have to go with white. <laughs> Wait, you said you said white. White. Okay, so we have we have royal blue, we have gold, and we have white. Okay, and, and there's Greater. no co there's no coincidence that the royal blue and golds are the colors of your sorority. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But really is like, okay, so so true story. I had so much royal blue in my wardrobe. Literally, I was giving clothes away during Centennial. Like our chief of staff, I was like, oh, you need some, you need royal blue and gold. So it's always been, those have been favorite colors. So what we like to do here at the Natasha Simona sequence, we ask you your favorite color and they fill the chat with all of the colors. And because there's three oh. of you, there goes all of your colors <laughs> popping up on the screen. <laughs> Um, let's take a photo. Hold on, everybody. Um, oh, so I'm going to take.
take we're gonna take a photo. I'm gonna turn the comments off. I'm sorry to everybody who was just typing. They're gonna they're gonna be so annoyed with me. We'll find a different system next time. Just deal with it. So let's take let's take a photo. We we definitely need a photo together. Okay, hold on. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, another pose. One more pose. Perfect. Look. <laughs> Yeah, oh, look at these teeth. All you all are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. You, are, oh, thank you. you are too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, ladies, okay, here what we go. What they say about it? What they say? Oh, well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I do know. Um, Aaron, Nikki, Lord have mercy. You're sitting. You no, know, you, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say Maxi. That's oh, wow. great. Oh, wow. That is. <laughs> woo. That hit me right to my yeah. chest. So Nikki, sorry. Alexis, and Aaron. How do you? How do you all? Um, when when you when when you are introduced and announced, how in what order do you go by? We go Alexis, and then Aaron, and then Nikki. So Alexis, Aaron, and Nikki. Yes. I love y'all. Thank you for being love here. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for pushing through and persevering and making this happen. I can't wait to meet you all. And please, any and everything that you have going on, let me know and we will push it out and, and we promote it. Please tell support. everybody to follow at brownstoneofficial.com. We are always, uh, at Brownstone Official is our Instagram and at brownstoneofficial.com, you can watch the whole journey, our rehearsals our sound checks, everything. Yes, I will, I will put that in, in everything. Please, everybody, make sure you're following these ladies right here. Um, click the drop down and you can follow right now. It won't kick you out. And when I, re when I post you all, please make sure everybody you're following at Brownstone Official. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you guys for thank watching. You. Bye. <laughs>